In hooking it, Mike Scroggins likes to go very straight. I think that Chris Barnes had a lot of practice time while we were at break to do more to the oil pattern to improve or help his cause. This is the eighth championship round appearance of the season for Barnes. Barnes opened up with a pair of strikes in his match versus Wolf, and then struck four through nine for the 243-240 win. Here is Mike Scroggins from Amarillo, Texas. One major on his resume, the 2005 Masters, five tour titles. Yes. And things this week at the U.S. Open, relatively easy for Mike Scroggins with all the experience he's been gaining here. I think uh, that really helped me a lot, especially the, the B squad where uh, you bowled right after the, uh, you know, the A squad with, without oiling. And that really, uh, I knew exactly what to do on that. So I think that really helped me out. Again, I said relatively <laughs> easy, Randy, yeah. as you're riding yeah. easy and yelling at me. Like, there's nothing easy yeah. out here. Again, relatively easy for him compared to maybe years in the past. Look at the amateurs average this week, 180. I actually bowled on Friday night and averaged like 178. And uh, just barely beat a member of our crew by like four or five pins. So you know who you are, Charles. You know, and, and you talked the setup of this match and the advantage clearly has to go to Chris Barnes one he's got a game under his belt two he is a master at creating or helping the oil pattern to his favor and three <laughs> past winner of this event I mean you can go on and on but but for Mike Scroggins he's in a, a scary spot because he knows that he can't let Chris Barnes get too far ahead and Chris Barnes proved in the first game that he is locked in. It was interesting talking to these two late last night after qualifying ended and we were able to know who was on the show and not. And we asked Chris Barnes, he said, you know, I went through about maybe four balls this week. Mike Scroggins, 10 to 12. Normally it's just two or three for him. What does that tell you? There's a lot of fishing going on. A lot of fishing, a lot yeah. of trying to, to just find, you know, a, a, a combination that would give him another half an inch to an inch area, either at the target or at the break point. But, you know, you talked to ball reps this week, you talked to the players this week, there was no magic ball. It, would, it just strictly came down to skill and making and repeating good shots, period. I, I think he's gonna be a handful, I really do. And, and again, you can see that he's moved in a little bit in this match, he's about two boards left of where he was in the match against Richie Wolf, and that was because of the practice that he got during the break. He was able to, to break down the oil pattern a little bit more and create a little more friction to the right. Scroggins strike and eight spare in the second. Told us about the confidence he had coming in here. You know, said the last two or three years have been getting better and better in this building for me. I feel like I kind of know the lanes, how they would play, what surface, the balls I needed. And, and I think the other reason why the left-handers traditionally have struggled here at the U.S. Open over the years is because there's just not enough of the of the south paws to actually break the oil pattern down enough to where they actually create a little bit more area for themselves. On the right side, you got a ton more right-handers beating up the oil pattern, and at least, if nothing else, creating more of a dry spot to throw to. I want to remind you that six of the best bowlers from the PBA's Women's Series will return for a special event presented by the USBC. Stephanie Nation, Michelle Feldman, Carolyn Doran-Ballard, 
Jerry Wessner, Wendy McPherson, Missy Bellander, all there to compete in this event, featuring the Petraglia scoring system. Ah, uh, terrible. Because I need right. more things we'll to learn in bowling. And Mike we'll Scroggins having some issues on the left side of that lane. And good news, he avoids the split again, it, and that was the the theme for this week. However, you've got a guy that you're going up against who proved he can throw a lot of strikes today. And not so much the case throughout the week. I mean, yeah, the guys would occasionally have a 240, 250, but it, it was rare. And the players knew that as long as they could stay clean and somehow try to manufacture a double or a three bagger, they had a really good chance to win matches. I don't believe that 2-0 or 2 team will be enough to beat Chris Barnes in this match. And the same goes for Norm Duke in the title match. It's close. That one just flew over the tent. And again, just another additive to the ingredients that make up a tough U.S. Open tournament. Once you do make that pure shot, and that you do find the pocket, you don't always strike. He also said to us, you know, I still have to be soft with my hands. Are you noticing that from him? Well, yeah, and, and you know, Chris works on that diligently because he's got such a high rev rate with heavy roll that if he starts grabbing it or, or gnawing on it at the bottom of the swing, it's just going to make his bowling ball hook early. And this week, to get the ball to feed the, to the right, he had to have a soft hand. So you take a look at his cat stats, from match two to match three. Ten and a half board, close to the 11th board. Look, he's a good three boards left from that last game. Uh-oh. Oh! oh. And, and right there is proof, Rob, of how much he's beaten up this oil pattern to his advantage, because I guarantee you, two games ago, this would have been six, and it would have flagged the head pin. Now look at the return he's getting. So Barnes has now gone strike spare, strike spare, strike, working the Dutch 200. Mike Scroggins struck in the first since then, three spares in a row. Oh, trouble. Ah. Got to get it going that way, but not too far. No time to panic yet for Scroggins, but it's getting awfully close. Well, it, when you're not hitting the pocket, your opponent is under these type of conditions. It, it's time to panic. Right now, he's just trying to make the one three seven nine. Great pickup! What a lift for Scroggins! Almost make a good shot here. We saw Norm Duke last year in the title match with a huge spare conversion for the title. And, you know, sometimes you get something like that, it's, it's able to kind of spur you on through the rest of the match. It's got to somehow find a Pockets. way to make great shots. Can't have any mistakes on his side of the lane. Mike Scroggins needs to dig deep. And there's his second strike of this semifinal. And Vice, uh, a little advice to our married men out there. When the missus offers a helpful performance suggestion, you take her up on it, Randy. You know what I'm talking about. Mike Scroggins knows also what I'm talking about. We will explain next. Tight one brewing in the semis.